The Salty V. Vespa, that is, for anyone thinking anything else. Known as the Vespa. With a max Piaggio speed of 140 km an hour. On road tyres, 140 km an hour. With a whopping 10 litre fuel this tank. Is the Vespa down down down. This Vespa goes 100 km an hour. Rimavira, in one of his high beam. With 140 km Take you km anywhere you want to go. On road. No one else on the scooter. I'm not sure how it's going to go. I'm doing my best. 150 cc. Turn it into on road tyres. Like an Italian conversation. You've got no idea what was just said. So let's let the Vespa do the talking. So the plan for this trip, firstly, is to take this beautiful 150cc Sport Primavera Vespa out of the bush, go camping. I don't think it's really a common thing to take a, a Vespa off-road. I'm not really sure how these tyres are going to go off-road. It kind of reminds me of going to Bali and just seeing what a, what a scooter can really handle. So under every Vespa seat, you have a little storage bucket. That's it right there. That's the whole bucket. No bigger than your normal, I guess, uh, mop, mop and bucket. My plan is on this trip, because of the price of diesel right now is an absolute joke. I think it's $2.20 down the road here. Now that's gonna cost me 300 bucks to fill up my Land Cruiser. This thing right here, the Salty V, probably $16.50. Now that still gets me about 150, 200 kilometers. $20 trip, $20 camping trip, this is probably what would be $150, $200 camping trip. The trick is, this bucket is all I'm allowed to take for my camp gear. So whatever I can fit in here is what I can take. Whatever I can't fit in here, I can't take unless I put it in my pockets, which I'm just not going to do. Defeats the purpose of this challenge. Uh, but. I'm, I'm so excited for this because I've got some amazing Cedar Summit lightweight camping gear that's gonna fit in here. I haven't actually tested it yet, so I'm really hoping I can get everything I need in here to have a comfortable night camp. Now you can go out bush and you know sleep under a tree under a, you know, on a warm night, then sure, anyone can do that. Might have a few creepy crawlies around, but you're probably not gonna be comfortable. I want to showcase how little and lightweight camp gear you really need to head out bush and, uh, and have a night's camp. Now for the purpose of this video and filming the whole thing, I'm gonna have an extra bag. So that's gonna sit on the back with me. So if you see that in any shots, well, that's all my camera gear that I need to make this happen. Alrighty, let's see what we can actually fit under this seat. Now legends, I have everything I need right here. I think, I hope. Sleeping bag, a little Spark SP, um, ultra die down, 150 plus loft. Now, this is my tent cover, my tent, tent pegs, and um, tent poles. Ether light, I guess that means a whole lot lighter than just light. Uh, XT insulated sleeping mat, my four liter water bladder, my pillow, a tower, probably won't bring this, I don't need it. I don't plan on showering on a one night trip. Uh, my little jet boil uh, stash. So this little stove opens up like that. And I've just got to grab one of the gas bottles as well. So screws onto the gas bottle, there's your stove. In here I've got my pot, collapsible pot, collapsible bowl, collapsible cup. That'll cook my backcountry food. So I've got, it's a bit old, <laughs> bit old now, roast lamb and vegetables, and also an instant mashed potato. Now this is, this is actually a five serves. This is way more than I need. Uh, but just for this purpose, I wanna show you that, you know, if I had a couple of these, I could still fit it in, because this is five times the size of a single one. See the summit spoon. Could just use uh, your hands or a bit of wood and a pelican head torch. Something out.
Fingertips are frozen. It's only, I think it's only 15 degrees today, but as soon as you start coming up into those hills, that wind, the temperature definitely drops. And you know, doing, I'm only doing 95, maybe max, max to 100, coming up the hills in the, in this bike. So it's uh, definitely not as cold as it could be, but it's it's cold enough to to make your fingers numb. Uh, out on the gravel road, pretty epic so far. Uh, lots of puddles. There's been a, it's been a big week of rain uh, in Perth, so just navigating the puddles and you know there's a there's a thin layer of kind of clay on top of these gravel roads. You got to watch out for not having dirt bike tyres. Definitely, it makes a big difference. It's like you're, you're ice skating on this road. We have found our way into the um, into the Jarrah and Mary Forest. Um, just over the back of Armadale. Um, we're about half an hour, 40 minutes out of Armadale. And yeah, it's nice. It's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a cold night though. You just grab the camera, chuck it back in, in the car and keep going on. Scooter. Oh. Pain in the ass. I'm unstuck so many times on that moss, just trying to get across that granite rock, really slippery. There's been so much rain, so I made it really challenging to, uh, to actually stay upright. Wow, this is magic. This is an incredible spot. It's gonna be cold and that sun's gonna set quick, but quickly get some firewood, get a fire going and set up that tent.
with this, um, <laughs> I was using my leather jacket, my legs. The sleeping bag's great, but I think it's more not for this kind of temperature that I just endured for the night. What does it say? Ah, there we go. Rated to five degrees, which is its lowest point. I think it was definitely around the uh, neg one last night, right now even. Ooh. That's the fog. That was <laughs> the coldest night's sleep I've had in quite some time. Wow, this is pretty cool. This is pretty epic. <laughs> Bet you didn't think you'd be making up here, did you? Pretty epic though, considering what I travel around in, in the Troopy. You get a massive drawer set up with pots, pans, and plates, cutlery. There's always too much cutlery, more than I need. In the Vespa, this is my camp kitchen. Got my pot, got my bowl, got my cup in here. Got my spoon, uh, got the cooker. Otherwise, you know, if you bring a, a different kind of um, Cedar Summit pot or a jet boil pot, you can chuck it on the fire if you want. You don't even have to bring gas. So the lightweight options are, are pretty endless at, at the moment on the market. Uh, you get some really crap stuff out there as well, don't get me wrong. And that's why I've always stuck with one company because I can't fault it. It's, it's, some, uh, it's some good gear. If that thing was a little bit bigger, I could have had a bigger sleeping bag, slightly thicker, better loft, better down in it, more down in it. And I wouldn't have frozen my ass off, uh, but it still got me through the night. I'm alive, I'm defrosting. Uh, tent was great, didn't need to peg it down because there's no wind. And yeah, mattress, the pillow. Oh, awesome.